What's going on guys? Kind of a quick video today. I want to talk about um, a couple of knife steels here. You got S30V and ZDP 189. Now I hear a lot of people talk about S30V and how difficult it is to sharpen. Personally, I don't feel that S30V is necessarily difficult to sharpen and I don't feel that ZDP 189 is difficult to sharpen. Yes, they're more difficult in a sense that it takes more time to sharpen them. But one of the things that I like to do is even with a knife that has kind of a polished edge like this, I like to take it back to a very coarse stone if the knife needs to be sharpened, if it truly needs to be sharpened rather than just touched up on a strop. I just find that it helps me apex a lot faster than it would if I went ahead and started on a 1000 grit or higher stone. The nice thing about going back to a coarse stone like this is that there's no guesswork as to whether or not you've apexed. A blade coming off of this 220, you can actually a lot of times see the burr and you can feel the burr. So I'll go ahead and we'll splash some water on this 220 grit edge pro stone. I really do like these edge pro stones. Uh, yes, they're small and technically they're a little bit more difficult to use. They really don't require any soaking, just a splash of water and they're pretty much ready to go. I like just setting them down on like a wet piece of plywood like this or like a wet washcloth. They seem to like stick and hold in place. That's what it looked like before we started. And now I just spent less than a minute on that edge pro stone. And this is what our edge is looking like now. You can definitely tell we've lost all of the polish that was on the blade. You can already see that we're forming a burr back in this area. I can actually see that burr forming on the polished side because that, that stone is pushing the burr because we're, all, we're working on this side of the knife, it's pushing that burr up over on this side of the blade. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I've switched sides and I'm looking to make sure that both the bevels on both sides of the knife match, more or less. This is kind of where it takes a pretty good eye to kind of determine um, if you need to move, remove a little bit more metal towards the tip or if you need to remove some metal towards the back of the blade um, versus the other side. So you want to kind of match up both sides because once you've apexed on one side, once you form that burr along the whole edge, um, you've already apex. Now your main mission is to make sure that that other side matches the side that you've already done. You know, as long as you maintain an angle throughout the sharpening process, there's no harm in working one portion of the blade um, and then another portion of the blade. As long as you maintain an angle, you can pretty much do whatever you want on the stone and it's really not gonna hurt anything. So my bevel, I still need to work up here towards the tip a little bit to uh, kind of match the other side kind of bring that apex more towards the center of the blade. Now when both sides match, that means that that apex is more or less in the center of the blade. It's more or less lined up um, as you're looking straight down. That apex is right in the middle of the blade. So I think right here, we're pretty close. We've got a nice, relatively even bevel all the way down on both sides. Both sides match up fairly well. And that means that our apex is gonna be right in the middle of the blade here. Now, I don't know if you can see that there. Let's see, yeah, see where that kind of rough spot is? Now that, that means that the burr is laying to this side of the knife. That rough spot right there is where the burr is actually dragging along the strap. Let's see if we can get this, is that we've got the burr laying to that side of the knife and see how it's just dragging. Now that lets you know right there that you formed a burr, that you've apexed and you formed a burr. Now what I'm gonna do is actually strop on this side of the blade, because this is the side that our uh, burr's laying on. I'm gonna strop until all this rough disappears. So after maybe just a couple seconds worth of stropping, you can see how um, we're already starting to smooth out on this side. Um, I'm using moderate pressure at a fairly shallow angle. This is about the angle that I'm stropping at. So very, very shallow angle here. And the roughness on the strop is pretty much gone. And that's exactly what we're looking for. When we switch sides, we've got a little bit of roughness, which means our uh, burr is getting smaller. And then I'm gonna start working it just kind of back and forth. Now, a lot of people have asked me, um, how do you know how much to do on one side? Well, honestly, I go until that roughness disappears and that roughness will kind of appear even with the higher grits. You can kind of see where 
that burr may be dragging along the strop. Really pay attention here to what's going on. If you're working towards the tip here of the blade and you notice just a little bit of a scratch right here in the strop in a certain area, then that tells you that there's still a tiny burr um, or a tiny rough spot in the blade remaining in that area. This is really another reason that I like a strop as a tool to help you know what's going on with your edge because it really does tell you a lot just by looking at what the edge is doing on the strop. And also pay attention to how the knife feels as you're stropping it. If it drags, then you most likely have a burr that's still left on the edge of the knife. If it glides smoothly across on one side and it feels relatively rough on the other side, then that means that the burr's laying over to that one side and you should probably work that side until it starts to smooth out. Okay, so this is really hard to get in focus here. But We'll see if we can whittle a hair. Oh, there it is. That's a whittled hair off of a 220 grit edge pro stone. That's a 10 minute edge. That edge took me 10 minutes to do. 220 grit edge pro stone and a knives plus strap block. That's kind of what our edge is looking like. Oh, I tried to, but it cut it. Uh, that didn't work. Let's try another one. Uh, it kind of did it. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of a hair whittle. It just wants to cut them rather than uh, whittle them. So I don't know. We got the one on camera. So again, that's 220 grit. In about 10 minutes, we sharpen ZDP 189 to hair whittling sharp. Now these are just my particular sharpening methods. This is just what works for me. If you have a method that works for you, let me know what it is in the comments. I'm interested to hear. And also, is there a point to having a knife that will whittle hair unless you're shaving with it? Is there a point to carrying around a pocket knife that you can whittle hair? Honestly, I don't really think there is. I think it's nice to know how to get that edge, but the second you use that edge on anything, and it doesn't matter the steel type, it can be ZDP 189, M390, S30V, it doesn't matter. The second you use that hair whittling edge on anything, you end up just destroying it and going back down to a working edge anyway. So I think it's nice to know how to do it, but honestly, I don't think there's a point to it. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.